Welcome back, everyone, to Last Night I Watched. My name is Ian, and I'm here with Roman. How's it going, Roman? It's going good. It's going good. It's going to be the dynamic duo today. Um, this is something we've never done before. We're talking about a fan film. We're talking about Cameron Cloutier's Queen of Hearts. Let's get into this thing. A fan film that was started, to my knowledge, in 2017. It was crowdfunded. This was a passion project of Cameron's, and he got it done. And it's four acts right now. I don't know when the fifth act is going to be dropping. It sounds like um, they're still working on the effects for it. But, yeah. What do you, um, I don't even know. Where should we begin? Should we talk about Twin Peaks the show first? Yeah, maybe um, because the characters are all from the TV show. Right. But, but they're kind of more the uh, characters that are on the side, right? For I the mean, most part. Well, Dale, I think Dale's, oh, Dale's yeah, like the yeah. main character. Yeah, of course. Although this is like a pre uh it's like a prequel a little bit yes with, with dale and stuff like that it's and it's also it also follows the ending of the second season too it's it's really interesting how it's done it's like a prequel and a sequel yeah they i liked that yeah um, the the side by side basically of five years ago with modern times and stuff like that um i guess i should start off by saying that i didn't finish twin peaks um i finished about halfway through season two i want to say it was kind of when the resolution of everything with leland and bob kind of came to a finish okay gotcha um so yeah i guess i got i guess i have a unique perspective on this because i don't know all the twin peaks stuff like Wyndham Earl. i don't know i didn't know caroline his wife at all uh at least that i can remember but you know i was able to pick up on it and stuff and and the number one thing that i take away from this film is the feel of it i guess you could say lynchian right very yeah very, very lynchian so. yeah. yeah so as as in terms of a an homage to that I thought it was just great it, it really felt like it could have been a, a missing piece like maybe because uh, the show ended in, in the 90s right 1991 right. or something like maybe this was the lost third season that was never found that's uh, the way I look at it yeah we have a third season now it, it dropped in 20 in fact it was just the fifth anniversary of it um, mm. about a week ago or so which I can't believe that I remember when that dropped my mom and I watched it that felt like yesterday mm -hmm. anyway um, yeah, I, I get that vibe too. It's like this was the, the what you said, like the lost season that never was. Mm -hmm. And uh, d would you say, do you like David Lynch? Yeah, I would say, but uh, I'm also not super well versed in his work. You know, I've never seen Eraserhead. I've never seen uh, Blue Velvet. So, you know, but I've seen interviews with him and stuff. Uh -huh. And <laughs> I love him. I, I love him as a person. He's a character. He's a, he's a fantastic person. Yeah. I, his voice... I'm David Lynch. It's just, yeah, everything about him is just so interesting. Yeah, I just imagine he's Gordon Cole in real life, basically. Yeah. Maybe a little yeah. quieter, but. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But um, even, but that's what I liked about it. I didn't necessarily need to know everything. I'm sure it would have helped in some ways. Yeah. Um, But still, I was able to watch it and have a good time with it and fall in love with the characters and stuff like that. Definitely. I, yeah. I really thought, um, honestly, the acting was, was really good for what is a, a fan film, like an amateur production, I guess you could call it. I have their names right here because I want to get them right. Um, Nico Abiera, I don't know how to say his last name, but he played Dale. I thought he did a great job at playing Dale. Yeah, you know, he was, uh, when he had the uh, alternate Dale, you know, the Black yeah, Lodge yes, Dale, yeah. he, he did really good with those. He was very menacing. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Annie, I thought, was really believable and um, she played really well. Yeah, Madison Bates, who I believe produced this uh, yeah, also. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I mean, everyone, really, down the list. Uh, I think a standout for me would be the Major. I, yeah. I loved him, I, and I thought he totally he totally would have fit right, Definitely. right in there with Twin Peaks. I mean, he, I know he's a character. He's uh, Bobby's dad, right? Yes, in the yeah. Show. Yeah, but um, I'm, I'm thinking of, I think it's the second episode, the second act, um, when they're walking through the forest, and uh, it's her and um what's the character's name dean I dean wanna, yeah, yeah. He, he's one of the bookhouse boys i like that yes yeah that's a good time yeah but i, I love how the major just pops up he's yeah. there and the music yeah. you know the the same music is it like the, the show. Dun, dun, yeah. audrey's theme i want to say oh is that see, i think it might be uh, yeah it's, uh, the music was really great i thought yeah. it added a lot and it it made it feel right at home with the rest of twin peaks yeah, definitely. See, I that's the thing. I, I my biggest takeaway. It, it caught the feel of Twin Peaks. I I wouldn't say I'm a fanatic of Twin Peaks. I do like it. I have a lot of like I have the the series on Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. um, I have the movie, and uh, 
it's I like it a lot. There's some lulls in uh in the second season of Twin Peaks that I'm not really the biggest fan of. Like there's like this whole like um kind of pageant thing. It ties in with Annie's story, but there's some stuff that kind of happens that I'm like, eh, I don't this is a little kind of like filler almost. Mm-hmm. But it it ends it kind of it's so funny the way it ended. It ended on a Have you ever seen the ending of the second season? No, I haven't. No. So it ends on a cliffhanger pretty much. And that's like, you know, it was kind of like the big, like, well, what happened? You know, like we never got that answer. They, they don't probably, resolve it in yeah. Fire Walk With Me? Um, no, because Fire Walk With Me is um, mainly a prequel. It, it tells like the last few days of Laura Palmer's uh, uh, life. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. It it, fall, it, it kind of is a sequel in a little bit of parts, but it has nothing to do with Annie. Annie's in Fire Walk With Me for a second. They kind of talk. That's what Annie is doing in this. She's... um. She's going to um, appear in Laura Palmer's bed because that's what happens in Firewalk With Me. I thought that was a great little tie-in because mm. she just appears in Annie's bed in Firewalk With Me for just a, a brief second. And she, I think she says exactly, you know, when she's reading that note, it's like, you know, Dale's in the Black Lodge or whatever. Yeah, yeah. She says that in Firewalk With Me. Oh, I thought nice. that was a little great tie-in. Good tie-in. Yeah. It seemed like there were plenty of good tie-ins. Yeah. Cameron knows his stuff. He is a, he's probably the end-all be-all of Twin Peaks knowledge. Yeah, the that's encyclopedia. When I, when I started watching his channel, I'm like, dude, this guy knows everything about Twin Peaks. Well, it, it really encyclopedia. shows. It shows uh, in, in Queen of Hearts, yeah. definitely. What um, I'll have to ask you, because I didn't know, what's the significance of the dress? Was that what Annie was wearing when she gets kidnapped from the pageant? Yes, know? exactly. Okay. Yeah. And they have Caroline in it, too, and it's from Wyndham, all that stuff. Caroline, I don't believe we ever saw on the show. She was just, um, we always kind of knew that there was some kind of backstory between her, Cooper, and Wyndham Earl. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I th- everything with Caroline I really like in this Mm-hmm. I like when they're eating dinner and um, they're giving each other Christmas presents. Yeah, and it's I forget it's not Christmas time. It's, it's in like May or April. Y- yeah, or it's like, like well, that. we don't like to give each other Christmas presents at Christmas. We prefer to do it at other other times of the year. I'm like, that's yeah. such a David Lynch thing, you know? Yeah, that's and like the way tell- they say it, the way yeah. they speak. It's, yeah. it's kind of quirky. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it just <laughs> captures that quirky feel. Yeah. I liked that a lot. And and even when she's first introduced, when she opens the door and she kind of looks at him, she's like, mm, no. Shuts the door <laughs> yeah. on him. Yeah. No, that was. Another... Oh, and then she opens it again. She's like, who are you? Yeah. yeah that was great. Yeah. It's just good performances, stuff like that. Yeah. It really makes you uh, fall into it. I would say like the one thing that keeps kind of reminding me that it's, uh, again, like air quotes, amateur. It's like an amateur film. I would say I'd, I realize this halfway through that it's the sound, the you know, because this is recorded, you said on an iPhone 11 Mac and a, and Go a GoPro, Pro, yeah. GoPro Hero 7, I want to say. Which is just insane because I did not know that. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was professional, like, you know, grade equipment. And, yeah. Yeah. So no, hats looks, off to Cameron for that. Exactly. That's, like, you know, like, that's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. There's some shots that look really great. It's just the only thing is the sound, it picks up that kind of echo. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you can tell that they're in a, an open room and stuff right. like that. I don't know how they do it in, in movies if they're doing uh you know after dubbing all that stuff probably there's probably a lot of like um uh what do you call that like a uh, post-production work on ADR, it adr adr yeah. probably too yeah. and then um maybe they wear mics you know hidden mm-hmm. away in equipment but yeah not so much here so that was kind of the one thing that like threw me off at first but once i got over that uh, no i totally fell like hook line and sinker into it i liked it a lot yeah yeah, yeah i did too um, it took him, there was a, I don't know the whole backstory, but I know he had some, you know, as any production does back, um, you know, back sets and issues and mm-hmm. it took him, a, I think this is mostly shot in like 2018, 2019, I want to say, I could be very wrong, but the fact that he got it out and that it's actually, you know, well acted and the story, you know, one thing that's dangerous to me about bringing back these franchises star wars uh jurassic park we're getting a new jurassic park movie um a lot of the time it kind of pisses me off with the characters uh the way they're written it's like that that character would never have done that Mm -hmm. you know this character like they're not like luke skywalker in the new uh, star wars movies i felt didn't really act like luke skywalker this i feel like every character acts the way they would have acted in the show and i was very impressed by that yeah, exactly. No, the even like the dialogue, what they say, it just fits in with everything yes. too. Yeah, the feel, everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's really hard to do. Some people say like, "Oh, well, you're just making the same thing." It's like, you know what? It's to me, it works. I like it. No, yeah, it's not. It's, and Cameron does put his own spin on it too. Yeah, exactly. You know, like you can tell he has a vision. He has his own way of writing. 
Well, he takes these characters that are already uh, exist within this universe, but then he fleshes them out and expands them, and it's done so well. Um, you know that that's just really impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the fact that he was able to do this, like I applaud him for it. Mm -hmm. So labor of love. He's been wanting to do this, I guess, ever since Twin Peaks ended in the '90s. So the fact that he was <laughs> finally got to do it is awesome. He said someone needs to give answers to this. Yes. And, you know, yeah. David Lynch wasn't stepping up, so yeah. At least so, not then. He's like, well, I'll be the man for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like that. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to uh, mention: Caroline's played by Charlotte Roy. I think she might. It's either her or um, Nico as Dale. They're probably my favorite characters. Although Madison. As Annie's pretty good too. Yeah. Um, who were you saying was a favorite character? You said maybe Caroline. Caroline. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she. I liked her look. She has a unique look. She has yes. those bangs on her head. Right. But yeah. only like partially. You know. Yeah. It, it fits her character. Who's, right. You know, her character's kind of. I don't know. Out there. Eccentric, maybe. Yeah. Quirky, eccentric. eccentric word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can really see. Because uh, you see, you get that from Dale, especially in the oh, original yeah. show. Uh, oh yeah. You know, he, he Kyle McLaughlin, he's just such a he does such a good job playing that quirkiness. Yeah. And then I felt like if he ran up against the Caroline that you get from Queen of Hearts, you know, in the show, they would have been a perfect match for each other. So definitely. Yeah. You can totally believe the the whole like falling in love thing. And Wyndham Earl doesn't treat her right and all that stuff. So. Right. You lost your privileges, buddy. Yeah, exactly. So um, when he goes to the Black Lodge in the show, when, you know, he, he calls up dale and then he goes missing for a few days mm -hmm. and is that the first time he's gone to the black lodge or no because caroline says like oh he does this all the time that's a good question i'm not entirely sure it might it might not be his first time mm -hmm. i don't know you're kind of he's kind of acting like relatively normal before he goes right yeah kinda? so it might be i'm not entirely sure yeah there's probably like lore out there mm -hmm. like ex uh, to use a star wars term expanded universe that might explain it mm -hmm. um Again, I'm not that. I, I've watched. I've watched all of Twin Peaks. And one thing I wish I did was I wish I brushed up on it. We just we just been busy with all of our our reviews. I haven't been able to um, rewatch it, which mm -hmm. I want to do soon. But I'm sure that there's probably a lot of explanation behind it. But I was kind of feeling that this was his first time going to the Black Lodge. Yeah, it seemed like it. Yeah. And then could be wrong though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's that whole world there the mythos you know yeah. I, i've overused it on this podcast but the world the term world building mm -hmm. um you know david lynch he's in those first two seasons he made this huge world and there's all these loose ends and things yeah and it's just perfect for something like this to to come in and explore it yeah yeah and i'm, I'm glad we got a little backstory on on dale uh you know and what like happened. what he what he was doing before twin peaks and mm -hmm. everything yeah yeah because they're in pittsburgh yes right? yeah, yeah. Which, uh, where, where is Twin Peaks in the show? Is it in Washington? It's in Washington State. Okay, yeah. 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 Which I think they filmed. Did I take notes? I hope I did. They filmed a little bit of it up up there. Yeah, yeah um, can, uh, King County, Washington. Yeah. Yeah. You can definitely tell there was some, like, on-location shooting. Cause, yeah. Uh, he's based out of Southern California, is that He's right? uh, down in Monterey. It's at uh, the Monterey Peninsula. Oh, hey. Yeah. You can get some good fog there too, oh, definitely. You know? but definitely. Uh, nothing quite like the Pacific Northwest, you know, right. You have to go up there for that. And definitely. they do. Yeah. Yeah. Some good shots. Yeah. That would have been fun. I'm sure probably going up there shooting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. What, what did you think of, uh, like the directing, the cinematography, stuff like that? Did you I like thought, it? I thought he did a good job. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the shot setups, the, um, just kind of having, you know, just the way the characters were framed in, in the shots and everything. I thought he did a good job, especially, you know, shooting it on an iPhone or GoPro. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, like that's just, to me, very impressive. Mm -hmm. um, just going into this, knowing the circumstances, knowing that this is a fan film. Because I don't even know if I've ever even watched a fan film, to be honest with you. Yeah, me neither, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Maybe I should watch more. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I mean, one thing we can say is you know it's there are some setbacks probably because this is a fan film because it was just you know a, um, not a productional or a professional production mm -hmm. but um the way it, the, the fact that it came together like this is to me very impressive and yeah, yeah. it's just very well done what do you think of the effects I thought they were pretty good. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um, the stuff at the end, especially with the Black Lodge, you know, the flickering. Yes. I thought was well done. And yeah. then the, uh, you know, that it's like that portal that opens. Right. You know, I, yeah. I thought that was pretty impressive, honestly. Be yeah. Better than uh, 
I don't know, Scorpion King or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the effects were good. Uh, the shooting, the, the cinematography, I thought, was just a, a real strength of it. Um, you know, like, there's some shots where I think there's one especially of Wyndham where he, he looks back towards the camera, but he's talking to Caroline, and it's it must be filming over her shoulder or something. Okay. And, uh, yeah, the, the way you can just squeeze both of them in, get them talking, and he's kind of like, you know, he was almost funny to me, yeah. the character. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's supposed to be, but the way he kept saying, my boy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I just liked uh, the conversational shots. The editing was, I'm sure, helped a lot there, too, when they're going back and forth. Uh, one other thing I did think of uh, was the the sets, the background. Mm. Like, I think the hospital that they're in, the hospital room, is just the same room, you know, redecorated yeah. a couple times. Yeah. But obviously, I mean, right. you know, it's not a big budget film. Exactly. You can't pay to use. But then there were other times where I thought, like, they were on location at places. Like, it looked like they were really in a hospital or really in an office building. Yeah. Or, you know, so yeah, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure he went out there and, you know, lo- did location scouting and right. stuff like that. The fact that he actually was able to shoot in a hospital to me is really impressive. Like, how do you do, you know, just like, hey, can we shoot here? Yeah, sure. Like, it's, I'm sure there's a huge process to it, but. Right. Like, oh, you got to close cool. down this whole wing. Yeah. I'm sure it costs a little bit of money. Yeah. But yeah, good thing it was, uh, you know, crowdfunded. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you can definitely tell that this is a a labor of love. Yeah, passion project, mm-hmm. definitely. Mm-hmm. So are we rating this? What do you think? You know, I. It, it's not complete yet. Uh, right. It's four acts so far, and there's a fifth act there's coming out. Final soon. fifth act. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think it would be best to hold off on a rating until then. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. We'll keep, like Carla said, we'll keep them waiting with bated breath. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I'm looking forward to Act Five. No, me too. Actually, I'm very excited to see how he wraps all this up. Well, and one cool thing about this is that it's kind of made me fall back in love with that Twin Peaks universe, and I think it I'm makes, gonna go back and rewatch all of it. It makes me want to do that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this time, you know, go, uh, you know, take all the steps and actually finish the season two and actually watch Fire with, Walk With Me. And yeah, I highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And it's just so the story of Annie Blackburn was never just really officially told or yeah. wrapped up. So it's just nice to finally get that, even if it's not, a, even if it's a fan film. To me, you know, Cameron has the chops enough to, you know, whatever, like I'm liking it. And it's like, you know what, this is, this is, this is probably the way I would have liked it it have to have gone yeah so yeah yeah she's got those uh with her story she's got those darker elements to it you know there's like the sexual abuse and stuff like that yeah and just her being basically lost kind of after the the black lodge and trying to reel her back in and yeah yeah no i I thought uh i thought it was all handled really well and, and done very very smartly i agree yeah 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 so uh as for ratings hold off for now yeah we'll we'll come back and we'll um we'll review act five when it comes out yeah and i'll probably rewatch all four acts again before yeah, i do the fifth that same. way i get a whole i think cameron's gonna put like um a, a big like just one long video of all uh, acts a full like hour and a half two hour yeah exactly yeah, that's smart that's good yeah let them all just segue right into each other exactly yeah, yeah. that'll be that'll be a fun watch mm-hmm and hopefully more good music because there's a lot of good music. Oh ones. yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah, the soundtrack is killer. We got David Bowie, Cat Stevens, Paul McCartney. Mm-hmm. Good stuff in there. Plus the original Twin Peaks music. Yep, exactly. Yeah. The yeah. the theme was honestly one of the very first things I fell in love with with the show. I watched the intro every single time. I, it's yeah, like, it's really long, but for some reason, you know, it's just so peaceful and and um like soothing. Yeah, and it really you know? settles you into yeah. the feeling you're gonna be getting. Yeah, that was like my mom's ringtone for a little while. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, thank you for taking the time to review this with me. Um, yeah, I think we're kind of the only ones on this show that have watched Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. You know, if that weren't the case, we'd have had other members on. But it's just uh, the Roman Indian show today. <laughs> but, um, you know, hopefully we, we did a good job. Yeah. I well, had a fun time talking about it with you. Me too. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. Because, I'm glad you liked it too. Yeah, I went in with. I wouldn't say low expectations or anything, but I was just like, oh, yeah, fan film, you know. I get what you what mean. It is, but yeah, it's 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 no, like, uh, you know, like what we're usually talking about. It's a little kind of out of left field. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad we did it. And like I said, shoot, maybe I'll take more chances on fan films now. You know? you're right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it gives, gives uh, inspiration to maybe even make a fan film as well shoot, somewhere down the line. I got an iPhone. I yeah. I have a GoPro in a drawer somewhere. There we go. Yeah. We're going to now make Now I just need talent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. We need it. Yeah, we 
go to go to talent school yeah yeah take some 101 lessons <laughs> yeah yeah all right we're wrapping this up i think so all right well thank you sir um yes go check out acts one through four of queen of hearts a twin peaks fan film and until then um yeah take care take care make sure uh you drink your daily cup of black coffee yes have a donut mm-hmm. at the double r diner mm-hmm. see ya see ya